Hi, if you've ever been confused about the world of interfacing products, this is the video for you. Stay tuned. Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Welcome to my channel and welcome to Friday Sewing School. So, so today we're going to unravel, no pun intended, the world of interfacing. So um, three things determine um, the various types of interfacing. One is, is it fusible or is it sew-in? Because there are still sew-in. There still are times when we might want to use a sew-in interfacing. Um, is it woven? Is it non-woven or is it a stretch product? And those are basically um, the three things. So weight, woven or non-woven, and stretch or not. Um, those are the things that determine the type of interfacing. So to just kind of um, go through the types and um, a little bit about each one, I have a few types of interfacing here, um, enough that you'll get the idea of the things that are out there. By no means is this an exhaustive collection because I just don't have it all, um, but uh, it should help you when you go to the counter to purchase interfacing to know what you're getting. This is a non-woven lightweight interfacing. I think it's called featherweight, very, very light. Um, there's not many things I would use this on. Um, it's not stretchy. Um, in either direction, um, a little bit if you go on the bias, but not meant to be stretchy anyway. Not meant for stretch fabrics, it's meant for woven fabrics, and it would be something that you want to maintain some drape in. It wouldn't be something that you want to make a really crisp collar. Um, if you wanted just a little more body to the fabric, um, but wanted to maintain some drape, that's when you would use a lightweight interfacing. This interfacing is a medium weight, non-woven interfacing and um, as you can see it doesn't stretch either and it is for um, this could be used on shirts or anything that um, you have want a little more body to that has slightly crisper than the feather weight um, that would be a medium weight non-woven now while we're on medium weight let me go to my favorite which is the SF-101. This is a woven interfacing, and I buy it by the bolt because this is my default interfacing, but this is has all the properties of fabric. It is definitely woven. It's basically a broadcloth that's fusible. That's basically the makeup of it. Um, it stretches on the bias just like fabric does does not stretch across the grain or the length of the grain, um, but it is fusible. And um, what I like about this is that it's going to have the same properties as your fabric when you wash it. Um, so because it's cloth, it's going to behave like cloth. And so when you wash it, um, it's not going to crinkle up. Um, this type, I think, tends to, if it comes apart, it'll crinkle up and get weird. This doesn't tend to do that because it is woven. Um, and honestly, none of them should come detached like that if you apply it correctly. Um, and that is something I wanna talk about as well. Um, so that's another mid-weight one. And then this is also mid-weight but has a special purpose. This is shirt tailor. And I use this for men's shirts. That that's strictly what I buy this for. Um, it gives you those crisp collars. This is a non-woven um, and it gives you those crisp, crisp collars that um, you get on men's shirts that no matter how you wash them, they always just are crisp. I am very, very happy with this interfacing. This one's made by Pelon. Um, it's a little bit more, a little beefier than regular mid-weight. Um, it's just very crisp. Um, but it is non-woven and these are the instructions. Now what I want, I left this on here for a reason. One, so I know what it is when I get in my interfacing drawer. 
Um, so you should always keep this pin to your interfacing so that you know what it is if you have some left. Because sometimes you're just interfacing a tab or something small. So, you know, don't throw away little pieces because it may keep you from having to purchase some at some point. Um, so I keep this just so I know what it is. And um, this also has the application instructions. And they can be different for different interfacing. Um, I have a, another woven um, interfacing that has the same look and feel as um, SF101, which I purchased at um, the warehouse in Texas that I go to. And it didn't come with instructions or anything, and I just assumed it was going to be like SF101. And I steamed it and steamed it, and it would not stick. And um, then I realized that maybe, maybe I'll try not steaming it, and the thing stuck like glue. So um, you definitely want to go over the instructions of how you're to apply it. Um, but this is Shirt Tailor. Highly recommend that for sh uh, men's shirts. Um, another one, this is a little, little bit more on the heavyweight side. This is a, just a heavyweight interfacing. Um, you might use this on bags, wallets, um, that kind of thing. And um, this one is very heavy, as you can see. This is almost board-like. This is called Craft Fuse. And um, this is definitely for um, bags, purses, things of that nature. Um, you would not use this on clothes. Um, I believe I've used this on the kids' backpacks. I used it on a purse that I made before. Um, it's definitely that type of thing. That is the heaviest of the heavy. Um, and then we get into knit interfacing. So knit interfacing, um, it's like, it's, the brand that I have is called Easy Knit, and it's also from Pellon. And the application is about the same as the other. You do, you do steam and, um, and heat. And it's like a trico, but it is, it's like a trico that's fusible, that's stretchy. So that is um, the Easy Knit, and this is what you need to use if you have knits. Um, don't use a woven interfacing on a knit project. You'll end up frustrating. You'll end up with pieces not fitting together because they're meant to stretch. Um, so you definitely want to use uh, the knit interfacing on any knit projects. And this is the only one that I've ever used, and it works really well. So um, this is Easy Knit. It's relatively an inexpensive. So I would class this almost as a woven because it's, well, knit, but, um, but it is real cloth that the fusible, uh, the, the uh, glue is adhered to. Um, and then you have some special types. Um, this is fusible fleece, which is just um, fleece that has a fusible backing on it. Um, you use this in quilting, um, some purses, um, things of that nature. I have so much because I used it for making journals. I actually plan to do a tutorial on making journals from composition notebooks. Um, it's a great Christmas gift and it takes literally minutes to make and um, they're very fun. And then this is another special type. This is called um, Inselbrite. And this is for um, insulating hot and cold. You'd use this for pot holders, um, casserole wraps. This I used for um, the cooler bags that I made. Um, this is the insulation that was in there to keep the cold in. So those are the types that I have on hand. And I know that there are many more. There's um, weft interfacing that's more for tailoring and um, special interfacing for um, suiting. You also can get any of these in black. Um, if you have a dark color, um, it's highly recommended that you use a, a darker interfacing. Um, I don't happen to have any on hand, but you can do that. But basically, you want to match the weight of the interfacing to your project, and you want to match also whether or not it's fusible to your project. For example, if you're using a, a sheer fabric and you just want to um, and it's a really lightweight or 
leather or something else that you can't iron. Then you want to use a sew-in interfacing to give that project just a little more body in certain areas. Um, you wouldn't want a fusible interfacing for that. Now your, as I said, your pattern will usually have recommendations for which you use, um, but if it doesn't, um, you can feel free to just kind of hold your fabric up and compare it to the interfacing. And if the interfacing um, is stiffer than the fabric, then you have to think, well, am I trying to make the, pad the fabric stiffer or am I just trying to give it body? And so those are just the questions you have to ask yourself um, and just, you know, think about like, if you're not going to use this in any kind of garment, you're going to um, save this for bags and things like that. So you just want to kind of ask yourself those questions. So then how to apply it? Um, most interfacing is applied with an iron and steam. And um, that's 99% of how you're going to apply most of them. I will show you a little trick though. Um, with a heat press. If you happen to be a person like me who also does vinyl crafting and you have a heat press, uh, like you have a silhouette or a Cricut machine, um, and you want to use your, uh, your heat press to apply interfacing, you will get such a nice, straight, uninterrupted bond um, with that. It's just, and it's just a nice, nice way to apply it. Um, but let me show you a couple tricks. So I have a small piece of fabric and I'm gonna apply this little piece of interfacing to it. So what I do, so I have my heat press set for 330 degrees, and I found that works really well. So I just place the piece that needs to be interfaced, and I place the fusible side down of interfacing, and then I spritz it with a little water because a lot of interfacings need steam to work. So I make sure that's laying all nice and flat. And then I just cover it with my Teflon sheet. Engage my heat press. And I usually do 20 seconds. I think this is set for 25, but 20 is plenty. And you have, you have a piece of interfacing nicely adhered to that. Um, the reason I spray it with water is um, because some need steam. Um, so if you have some that does not need steam, you would skip that step and um, it works out really well. Now, because I've spritzed it with water, it does still feel a little bit damp. So what I tend to do is I, so I would just make that the last thing I do in the evening before um, I stop sewing and I would just go ahead and interface all the pieces that I need for the next day and just leave them out overnight. In the morning, they're dry, the interfacing's on and I'm good to go. So I hope that helps because <laughs> it does speed up the process and it also just makes it adhere so nice and even and flat and nothing is stretched out and there's no bubbles and um, I really love my heat press for a lot of things but um, that's a new thing I'm excited about. So let me show you another trick um, about interfacing. So I, you know, I'll know that I've talked about the So Keezy tapes. Um, they sell for nine dollars for 25 yards and they make the hem of your garments just really uh, nice it's knit stay tape is what it is and it really helps your um, the just any place where you need to give knit a little body I like it on the hems of t-shirts and things like that well that gets expensive at nine dollars for 25 yards it doesn't sound like a lot but when you consider it's probably two yards per project it's kind of expensive. So um, what I did recently, and it's working very well, I purchased some Easy Knit interfacing and I simply cut strips. That's a, that's a partial one. I simply cut strips all the way across of knit interfacing. And then I wound them around this um, empty spool. It's, all, it's just an empty thread spool. And then I keep that for um, 
for knit projects. And so when I come to a, uh, the hem of a t-shirt, I just apply it like this. And when I get to the end of one piece, I'll just pick up and overlap it slightly. Whoop. I'll just overlap it slightly and continue on. And um, it makes a really nice hem. It works just as well as um, purchasing so easy. Now, a yard of Easy Knit, I think, is about $4.99 list price. Um, when it's on sale at Joann's, I think I paid $2.99 a yard. Um, I think it was, yeah, between 2 and $3 a yard the last time because of a sale. I bought two yards, and um, I'll have it for forever because I mean they're just one inch strips and um, yeah it doesn't take very long at all to make it because it's just a ruler and a rotary cutter in a few minutes and you can have just a whole bunch of it so um, just a tip um, if you're trying to save money if you sew as much as I do you kind of have to look for ways to save money because all those fun things to use they get expensive and um, unless you're factoring that into the cost that, of making something for someone else, then it really does, sewing can become an expensive hobby and um, it shouldn't have to be. So that's one thing you can do, just wrap it around there and then you have it. I kept the so easy bag and I just put it down in there and hang it on my clipboard, pegboard. And um, it's, a great, uh, it's a great substitute for that. Um, I love so easy, don't get me wrong. And if you don't have the time and you don't make t-shirts that often, you can um, you can go ahead and you know, just use that. Um, but 25 yards for $9, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it kind of is. Because um, I, I think I went through one my last one in a month, and that's when I decided I really needed to find another way to do that. So um, I tried this, and I really like it. Um, I just cut the easy knit. It's a little bit lighter than um, So Keezy, but um, I actually kind of like that too. I did this hem with it. I just finished this um, classic tee this morning and I just um, applied it and then flipped over the hem and um, it gave it body and it just sits really nice. So um, just a tip. So that's an overview of interfacings for you. I hope that helped. I hope it cleared up some of the mystery. Um, my favorite types, as I said, three favorite types of interfacing. One is um, Easy Knit. And a, lot, a big reason why I buy that is so that I can do the tapes. Um, my other favorite is SF101. That's a good all-around mid-weight interfacing. And um, Shirt Tailor is my other favorite, and I use that exclusively for my husband's shirts. So um, I hope that helps and clears up some of the mystery. Okay, so I also had a question from someone who wanted to know um, how much full bust adjustment she should add when she's doing a full bust adjustment. And I realized I really didn't cover that. So I made you a little handout, which you can, there's a link in the description below. You can go and download this for your reference. Um, if you want to find your cup size, um, you want to compare your upper bust to your full bust. And basically, um, cup sizes go by the inches. So an A cup would just be a one inch difference. B cup would be two inches. C cup would be three inches. D cup would be four inches. So most patterns are drafted for a B cup, unless they have full bust adjustments or you know they've already take, done the work for you. Um, they're just done with a, D, a B cup because that's what's considered average. So if you are a C cup and you just need to adjust that, you'll just add the one inch. Um, if you're a D cup, then you're gonna add two inches. So I hope that makes sense. Um, the other thing I want to mention about that, and I'm only using myself as an example, I've never really seen this written anywhere, but from my experience, I do a narrow shoulder adjustment, and I've shown you that in the past, um, because my neck and shoulders are much smaller than the rest of me, and um, I end up having to fix neck lines all the time, and um, you know, pull, I'm always constantly pulling things and necklines gape and stuff like that. 
So I do a narrow shoulder adjustment. So when I do that, I'm using a smaller size neck and shoulders. Now, because I'm a middle-aged lady with a spare tire and my hips are big, if I do that, then my bust size kind of matches the rest of me, if that makes any sense. Because even though I'm busty, I'm small here, but then the rest of me is the bigger size. So I don't do a FBA because I've already adjusted up here. I hope that makes sense. Um, if not, ask in the comments, I'll try and explain it further. Um, but if you do a narrow shoulder adjustment, you might not have to do as much of a bust adjustment. Just depends on how you're built. Um, but if, you ha if you're having difficulty with that, I would say um, try just doing the narrow shoulder adjustment and see what that does. And then um, you can do this with muslin so that you're not messing up any good garments. Um, and then try it with um, the narrow shoulder adjustment and a smaller FBA and see if that doesn't work. I just know that from my own personal experience, um, I don't do an FBA because I've already adjusted for up here with narrow shoulder, narrow shoulder adjustment. So um, I hope that helps too. Um, you want to choose your pattern size for your upper bust and then do your um, full bust adjustment. So hopefully that helps. Um, my problem though was when I did that, um, it didn't correspond to the rest of me. So instead of buying smaller, making this bigger and making this bigger, I just bought bigger and made this smaller. So I hope that's clear, <laughs> but um, everybody's body is different and that's why we, um, why we do muslins and try this and try that. And you'll find what works for you. Um, once you do, it's real simple. Um, you just uh, take some measurements on the pattern and you know exactly what you need to do. So it isn't really, um, it's only hard in the beginning. And then once you learn your body, um, it's not hard anymore at all. So I hope that helps. Um, I really enjoy co uh, communicating with all of you in the comments. So um, thank you for that. And um, I hope you have a fabulous weekend. Um, I am going back to the fabric outlet tomorrow. I'm going to purchase all the fabric needed for my Christmas gift sewing. So that should be fun. I'll probably have a haul to show you pretty soon here. And um, yeah, so I hope you have a fabulous weekend. I don't know if you have any sewing planned. I do. Um, I'm making some Christmas jammies. Let me show you. So I was sent this Christmas fabric from Minerva and I am doing Carolyn pajamas for myself for Christmas jammies and I'll be writing a blog post for Minerva with that. So um, that's going to be a fun and exciting because the holidays are approaching and tomorrow I'm going back to the Zinc's fabric outlet to purchase all the fabric I need for my Christmas gifts. So um, I'll have a haul to show you next week. Um, I will see you on Tuesday or Wednesday next week. Um, maybe both. And um, next Friday, we'll carry on with Friday Sewing School. Have a wonderful weekend. Happy sewing.